Hey folks, this is my first attempt at doing a tutorial video of sorts. Um, during the 20 or so years that I ran the studio where uh, people used to visit me uh, in Brisbane, I didn't really have time to do this sort of thing. So now that I'm operating entirely remotely for music production and mixing and mastering, I'm trying to get into a little bit of tuition as well to, I don't know, balance things up for me a little bit. Um, and I've got a lot of knowledge I think I can share, so I'd like to be able to do that if I can. I do offer one-on-one -on -one tuition and mentoring and that sort of thing if you're interested. Um, and I guarantee you to only give you the best of information and uh, not have you experimenting like uh, some other uh, YouTube services that you might see purporting to know something or two about this sort of thing. Uh, so what I want to talk about today is a program called Audio Gritter. And the idea is that it can help to reduce pretty majorly the usage of CPU inside your door if you've ever had that happen. So if you've ever seen the CPU in your door maxing out or getting pretty close to it, um, you might actually have a bit of a look at the system CPU and see that the CPU of the system might not be under much pressure at all. So what Audio Gridder does is runs plugins outside the door. And the reason it does that is because inside the door, each track that we use can only ever access one core of your CPU. And the meter that you see inside the door is showing you how close you're getting to maxing out one of those cores. Because if you do that, you can no longer access your audio device and sound devices and that sort of thing in the computer. You can spread out the use by putting small numbers of plugins on a lot of tracks. But if you happen to condense the use by putting a lot of plugins on a few tracks, like if you've got a, a very long bus chain for a drum bus or a mix bus, you can get pretty close to maxing out the CPU pretty quickly. So Audio Gridder comes in, it runs plugins outside the door. It can in fact run each plugin as a separate program on your computer. It can also run on a networked computer. So if you've got a spare machine, you can run it on that as well. And what it does is spread the load. So it allows you to use the multi-threading of modern CPUs a lot better. This has been a problem since the 90s when I started using um, doors as well. It was it was always that way and it still is um, incredibly. Some doors have a, a little bit of multi-threading help. I think Reaper does a pretty good job, but it's still not particularly great. Um, so what we're going to do is have a look at a few examples where we're going to do some extreme settings to show what we're talking about exactly. And then I'm going to show you a practical example of a tune uh, where we can see how Audio Gridder can help spread the load of CPU use. And hopefully you can operate inside your door without maxing it out. Uh, and use your computer to its fullest potential uh, after this video. So let's get into it. Okay, so in this project, what we've got is three folders. Um, the first orange folder here contains 75 tracks of audio. It's just a drum loop. I'm gonna play it to you once because if I play it with the plugins later on, it'll sound pretty rough. So I'm gonna play it to you uh, once, just um, so you can hear what the drum, the drum loop sounds like. It's very simple. So it's a live recording um, that my very good friend and colleague Steve Pope did for me in his Melbourne studio for a project. And I nicked that from um, another project and I've used it as well for the example track that uh, we'll work on in a second. But basically uh, these, these 75 tracks of drum loop, so they're the orange ones there, they've all got one instance of the UAD Sound City Studios kind of room emulation plugin. It does a bit of everything. It does some compression, some EQ and a bit of reverb too, but um, it's primarily a, um, a room emulation thing. So yeah, we've got one, uh, as you can see, inserted on each of these 75 tracks. Now, I'm not gonna play the audio because it'll uh, feed back and loop and do all sorts of things. So what we're gonna do is just watch the CPU meter here when I enable these 75 tracks. So there we go, 75 tracks are enabled. If I press play, we can see that the CPUs are, you know, late 80s, 90% uh, inside the door. So what that means is that we get away with 75 tracks with one insert and it gets close to maxing out. I'll stop it, I'll disable all of those plugins. There they go, they're all gone. The next thing I've got here in the pink uh, folder is a mere three tracks of the same drum loop. But instead of having one version of Sound City, they've each got 10. 
you wouldn't do this, but it's an extreme example, as I said. So if I select all three of those and I enable these 10 on each of those three tracks, so that's a total of 30 plugins. If I press play on that and have a look at the performance meter, we can see that again, we're pretty much at 90%, late 80s, 90% indoor CPU usage. So we're hitting that even with a, a three track project running essentially. So if we have a look at the activity monitor here, we can have a look at, in fact, the CPU is 50% idle. So we're only getting about a combined 50% use, you know, a little under 47%, 48% use of the computer itself, the whole system. But we're pretty close to maxing it out inside the door. So the challenge is um, how do we use larger chains or um, you know large projects? Say you've got 120 tracks in your project and you've got a number of these channels with a lot of plugins on them. This is where Audio Gridder uh, comes in. So if we have a look at the settings quickly on Audio Gridder, I'm not going to teach you how to use it again. Um, we've got uh, two key settings when you run it in local mode. So I've installed and I'm running it locally. So I'm not using a spare computer or anything like that or a network machine. It's it's a local thing. So I've got this uh, sandbox mode. It's called plugin isolation. That means that we're operating each plugin as its own program on the computer. That's what will happen. You can also use chain isolation. What that means is anytime you group them together in the one audio gridder group, that group will be running on the same core. But why would we do that when we can spread them out? Then we've got uh, screen capturing mode down here. And if you're running it again on local mode on the same computer, just disable it. What that's for is the, the door interface. When you see the, the pop-up of the plugin interface where you can drag the settings around or whatever, um, that runs in local mode. So it's a high resolution, highly responsive, sharp picture. If you're on a network, you might want to choose something different. Um, so that's, that's all I'm going to tell you about the settings because it's very in depth. The other little window that runs in the um, tray um, here is the monitor. And what we've got here is the monitor of what I'm about to show you of all of the, the UAD Sound City instances that we've got running on the three green tracks. So these are the same three uh, drum loop tracks, but in the green ones, they're running inside Audio Gridder. And you can see if I move the audio gridder window, we're getting like a VN, a local VNC connection uh, version of that plugin. So I can, of course, um, still uh, click and use the, the plugin interface as normal um, and move all the faders and whatever else I need to do. So it pops up there as a sort of an independent window from this, this plugin window here. But if I now select those three tracks and enable them, we can see him turning all on, firing all on in the Audio Gridder monitor there. So Audio Gridder is now running them. Uh, you will find that the latency is a little higher. So I think uh, it uses about six milliseconds by itself, the Sound City plugin on, on my machine with my settings. But we're getting more like double that. So about 12, 17, 15, 14 milliseconds. Um, that's because I've got uh, buffer settings, uh, which you can choose as well. With this little guy here, I've got two full blocks. I'm running at 2048 uh, here, and I've got two full blocks of buffering. So I'm adding a little bit of extra buffer um, just so that I get uh, a safe uh, communication, I suppose, between them. So I'm going to close that uh, monitor window, and I'm going to play the track now. We can see that with still 30 copies of Sound City running on those three um, ones that push the CPU before to 90%. We're now on about 10%, 9% inside the door. And you can, see, in fact, see that the, the CPU use is you know, zero. Occasionally, it's one. Uh, so uh, we're very, very comfortably running these chains of plugins here for the price of the audio gridder um, networking and video servicing that's happening. If I just go to Activity Monitor here and have a look at the audio gridder set up this is what you see so uh, each of these little audio gridder server things is actually a plugin running as an independent program on the computer then you've got of course the graphics and media which is what we're running so we're seeing the connection come through so it has a bit of overhead as well but 
that's a pretty good payoff, uh, really, in the scheme of things when this is an extreme example. So we have a lot of plugin interfaces and, and servers running on this, but we're very, very easily playing this project now uh, with just the 9, 10% of CPU usage. Um, so it's, it's taken it outside the door. Now I'm going to load up a project uh, which is a little bit more of a practical example. So we can see that, that overhead is not as bad as it seems when you've got a normal track that you're working on. So you'll find that um, uh, the, the, the amount that you're spending on CPU elsewhere in the system is nowhere near as much. It's quite comparable actually, but your door usage will drop significantly. So um, I'm going to go ahead and close this project and open up the next one. Okay, so the project is open and what we've got in this one is just something that I put together um, because I know that if I use a client's piece of audio, every single person I work with releases their music. So if I use it, it'll get taken down. So I have to come up with something unique. So I've put something together here uh, just quickly yesterday for the purposes of showing you the, the practical use of Audio Gridder. Oh, what I'll do actually is I'll just play the track first so you can listen to it. It's uh, just under a minute. Okay, there we go. So um, we've got some guitars. I'll, I'll show you some of the bits and pieces that uh, are in the track. So here's some, some guitars initially. We've got our, our drums that Steve recorded, Steve Pope recorded down in Melbourne for this project that I nicked the drums out of and I've just played along with. We got a bass guitar that I played. Uh, we've got a synth bass that gets used in the chorus. It's pretty quiet. We've got a pad, which is uh, UA's uh, Opal synth. Um, it's just a preset with a bit of tweaking. Similarly, a lead from UA's Opal again. Again, I've kept it pretty simple. It's a preset with a bit of tweaking. And that's going through, I think, the Galaxy uh, Echo plugin of theirs as well. Pretty UA heavy, this one. I then got the uh, Ravel Piano, uh, which is a UA plugin. And then a little, a little sweep effect. So that's the makeup of it. And when I play it, you can see that the performance meter is... So I guess it's around 50 something, 60%. We can see that a lot of the UAD plugins are uh, towards the top of the use as well. So uh, you've got the Ravel Piano and the Sound City Studios featuring pretty heavily. So when I play it back here, I'm going to also uh, have a look at the system CPU to see what's happening so that we can compare. So again, the door CPU says around about 60. So you can see that uh, we've got about 60, 65% idle 
while it's working. So we've got plenty of space on the main machine. And it's a lot more than what the door is suggesting because inside the door, obviously, with some of these chains that are in the mixer, um, some of these decent ones here on the drum bus and the guitar bus and the mix bus and a few others, we're obviously hitting, you know, towards the, the maximum of a core, uh, generally speaking, a lot more than the rest of the system is. So if we remember that number, this project takes up about 60% of the CPU. And now I'm going to open up a project where I have painstakingly changed some of the plugins to be running inside the audio gridder wrapper and running outside the door and compare the CPU usage. Okay, we've got the other version of the project. It's the same project where I've swapped out a bunch of the, the plugins to be running on audio gridder instead of inside the door. So if I have a bit of a look at the audio gridder monitor, we can see how many of these um, plugins at the top right there I've actually outsourced to audio gridder. Um, so there's quite a few of them there. And I'll just play it back to show you what's happening with the CPU usage. Um, remember, it was about 60%, I think, with the previous project. So here we go and play the chorus. So we can see it's about 34, 35% usage inside the door. So for the same project running, we're saving quite a bit of CPU. If we have a look at when it's running and we look at the system CPU as well, I think the idle was about 60-ish um, percent, 60 -ish percent on the other project. I have a look at the idle now. So we're actually only using about 5% more CPU on the overall system, but we're saving 25% CPU inside the door by allowing Audio Gridder to run those individual plugins as individual programs on the computer and share the load amongst the cores. So for example, on the drum bus here, I've, I've got the Hitsville plugin. Uh, running through Audio Gridder, which is just an EQ that UAD have. The UA176 is running uh, on Audio Gridder as well. And then all of the Sound Cities, which are pretty high CPU uh, usage ones, I'm running. So there's a Sound City on the drum bus and on the electric guitar bus and the synths as well. I just whacked on a bunch of stuff. Um, all of those are running inside of Audio Gridder uh, as well. So those high CPU use plugins, like your um, room emulations or you know heavy use reverbs, that sort of thing, convolution, really complex stuff. If they're outsourced to Audio Gridder, particularly as a minimum, uh, you'll find that you'll save quite a bit of CPU inside the door. And it's a bit of a complex topic as a first uh, YouTube video, but I feel like it really does um, open up the world of door processing. Um, a lot more for you if you're using a computer that doesn't have a lot of CPU or if you've got a good CPU and you're wondering why, you know, you've got, I've got this uh, M2 Max, Max Studio, why you've got a computer like that and you're hitting the maximum still, it could very well be that all you're doing in your projects is loading up too many plugins in a few um, key areas in a chain and your door is maxing out one of the cores on your computer. So you're starting to hit that um, you know, 90 to 100% usage. If you outsource some of those plugins to Audio Gridder and run them still on your computer, but outside the door, you may find that you will save a lot of CPU. So thanks for watching this length of time for this video. And um, I'll try and make some more as soon as possible as well. And again, if anyone wants any tuition or mentoring or anything like that on mixing, mastering, music production, I've got a lot to share and I'd love to do it if I can. So get in touch. Thanks again.